straight to my panel. Dr. Kathleen London, board certified family practice physician. Judy Kuriansky, clinical psychologist. Brian Monroe, CNN contributor. He conducted the last domestic interview with Michael Jackson. Tom Ruskin, former New York City police detective investigator and president of CMP Protective and Investigative Group. Tamara Holder, criminal defense attorney. Tamara, if evidence shows that Dr. Marie has been untruthful, it would seem that he's in deeper trouble. What's your take on this? Well, he has been, had diarrhea of the mouth and from the beginning. He <laughs> went, <laughs> you know, it's lack of a better term, but he, you know, he went to the authorities with his attorney and started talking and giving his, his uh, detailed timeline that was the stupidest thing he could have possibly done. His attorney should have advised him to keep his mouth shut from the very beginning and let the police do their investigation without, without a statement. Now he is locked in to this timeline and what he did to Michael Jackson, and they are going to use that to charge him with, I believe, a murder. TMZ is citing law is enforcement sources who say that the coroner has been unable to pinpoint the exact time of Jackson's death. And according to these same sources, paramedics believe that he was already dead for at least an hour, maybe longer. So does that offer any insight into this? Absolutely. That shows that there is something that was going on in that time that he was afraid to really talk, call about. This is the and, same and while thing you're that talking, happened, by the way, to Heath Ledger. Wait, let me just point out to our that, viewers what we're doing is we're showing you the timeline as depicted in the affidavit. You see 1040 a.m., propofol and lidocaine, 1050. The doctor apparently leaves the room, 1052. Jackson's not breathing. Then this series of phone calls, three cell phone calls between 1118 and about noon. Noon. Finally, at 12:21, a security called 911. So, first of all, uh, l let me let me go to uh, Brian, CNN contributor, Brian Monroe. Th this delay, this timeline delay, you know, this is very troubling. We know that Michael Jackson had a say in who was around him. Many people were not allowed upstairs. The doctor was one of the only people on the staff that could be upstairs. Uh, what do you make of all all of these revelations coming out? Well, that delay in, in the calling of 911 is, is critical because even if you believe the timeline as it was laid out in the affidavit, and there's a lot of questions there, uh, you know, for instance, did he really just step out for a couple of minutes, as he says? Uh, you know, that kind of medicine, that deadly cocktail, being topped off with propofol, you have got to have, as the doctor said, it's got to be monitored and monitored with the, the proper equipment right there on the spot. You can't walk out, take, make a few phone calls. And then for him to take the time, as it's alleged in, in, in the affidavit, that he uh, made several phone calls before calling 911, that, that just doesn't wash. It, it really doesn't make sense. I'd also Dr. Have Judy, to from, 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 from a, can, go can on, who's talking out? here? Um, I'd, okay, I'd, like, yeah. I'd like to point out that what I find interesting about this timeline is pre-10 o'clock. Remember, the chef went on Larry King Live, I believe, and she said that, that Dr. Murray, every morning, Every morning, went downstairs to get Michael Jackson's breakfast, and he didn't. But not do that this, this morning. Mor not, not on this morning. morning. That's right. And that is that that uh, time that he would do that was about nine in the morning. So my my idea is that something happened terribly wrong before the propofol, before he left the room for two minutes, somewhere in the early morning hours, maybe even in the middle of the night, and during this, you know, post nine o'clock, Dr. Murray was trying to undo what he'd already done, which I believe already the killed Michael Jackson. The well, it is absolutely. Well, Tamara, Tamara, Tamara Holder, as a defense attorney, as a defense well, attorney, Tamara, what do you what do you say to this doctor? I don't even understand why this doctor was allowed to make that YouTube tape last week. I really don't. Well, I, here's the thing: a lot of people who are criminals, what they do is they go out and they make statements. We all know about Scott Peterson going on TV, and that's right. kind but this of doctor the hasn't even been charged yet, so well, we don't necessarily but, want to call. Except, him a well, criminal. neither was Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson did an interview, and he was and his wife was allegedly still missing. My point is, is that he is continuing to put himself out there. But my biggest problem, something that was just brought up, is that, uh, you know, he. Doc, this doctor took off and left the scene after Michael was put into the ambulance. 
So the LAPD, I think, is making some mistakes here in the beginning. I'm not saying that they can't recover from those mistakes, but when there is a major scene, a crime scene potentially, you lock down all of those witnesses and you make sure they do not leave this crime scene. Well, How lock down Dr. the witnesses. There was a moving well, van. Dr. There was a moving was... van. Brian, Brian, jump in here. There was a moving van that came in. The family took out a lot of the stuff that was in the house. They didn't lock down the scene or or the witnesses. Brian, not at all. And in fact, there, there, were the re there were the reports that they found uh, additional. Uh, medications in some of the clauses that they didn't find the first time. So I don't know if that scene was locked down at all. It wasn't locked down because Dr. Murray was allowed to leave and, 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 and go and, back to Texas. In fairness to the LAPD, you didn't know you had a crime scene. You know you have an injured victim. That's you know he's true. under a doctor's care and you know he's going to the hospital. Until later on when you determine that you may have a crime scene, there's no reason to lock it down. That's you don't not true. Have they sent that, was, that was determined fairly early in the process. I right. think hold psychologically, okay. hold anybody walking into a Let's take another, let's take room. another caller. We've got Carol from Washington who's on the line. Carol, what's your question? Yeah, I'd like to know, um, when Dr. Murray goes running down the back steps into the kitchen and the chef uh, sees him and he wants Prince, who was applying CPR to Michael at that time? Well, that's, that's a great question, and frankly, I know that a lot <laughs> of people have that question. Let's, uh, Dr. Well, London. in fact, one, one of the questions... Do I'm sorry, bro. I just want to get it from a doctor's I was gonna perspective. Say that, if, if, okay. Go, no, go on, Brian. I don't mean to cut you off. No, I was just going to say one of the questions that came up early on was that the, that the doctor performed CPR on the bed, or so he said. And we know <laughs> right. that you know, performing CPR on a bed with not that, a hard right. surface was an issue.